The world held its breath as SpaceX's Starship blasted off into the sky for its first orbital test flight on April 20th, 2023. The spacecraft was a sight to behold as it soared toward the stars, captivating millions of viewers around the globe. Everyone was on the edge of their seats, eagerly anticipating the first ever orbital flight test of the Starship. In this video, we will discuss what happened during the first flight test, the aftermath of the launch, and what's next for the Starship. Before the launch of the Starship, Elon Musk, the eccentric billionaire behind SpaceX, had tried to temper expectations. According to him, just getting the vehicle off the ground and not destroying the launch pad infrastructure would be considered a win. Musk and the SpaceX team had set the launch date for the highly anticipated Starship on April 17, 2023. However, the much-awaited event had to be canceled due to a frozen pressure valve. Musk took to Twitter to break the news, much to the disappointment of space enthusiasts around the world. Three days later, on April 20th, Starship cleared its launch complex on the U.S.-Mexico border and picked up pace as it headed out over the Gulf of Mexico. It wasn't immediately apparent from the ground, but during the initial stages of the flight, a few of the 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy first stage failed. As the flight progressed, additional engines also failed, with up to eight appearing to have gone out by the time the rocket reached an altitude just shy of 25 miles, 40 kilometers. Even with a few engines out of 33 Raptors, the Starship managed to hold its thrust and continue to gain altitude. Those Raptors got some serious rocket power. Four minutes into the flight, Starship began to lose altitude. Then a large explosion ripped across the sky, resulting from the computers triggering the vehicle's flight termination system before the planned rocket stage separation, something which SpaceX termed a rapid unscheduled disassembly. After the rocket's explosion, SpaceX released a statement saying, with a test like this, success comes from what we learn, and we learned a tremendous amount about the vehicle and ground systems today that will help us improve on future flights of Starship. After the explosion of the Starship, Musk, in a tweet, called it an exciting test launch of Starship. Learned a lot for the next test launch in a few months. Following the test flight, the internet was ablaze with reactions. Many individuals were ready to condemn Elon Musk and his rocket company due to some controversial comments and actions from Musk in recent times. For these individuals, this failure was a perfect opportunity to voice their dislike for Musk and his company. They questioned the intelligence of the engineers for celebrating what seemed like a spectacular failure. This reaction is understandable, especially for those who view NASA as a model for space agencies that cannot afford to fail, since failures on NASA's part often involve the loss of human life or expensive satellites. Therefore, government explosions are considered disastrous. However, this was not the case in this instance. For those with knowledge of the launch industry and the iterative design process, the fact that the Super Heavy rocket and Starship upper stage successfully launched was a significant achievement. Why? Because one could sit in meetings for ages and discuss everything that could go wrong with such a colossal-sized rocket with an unprecedented number of first-stage engines. Alternatively, the rocket could be configured in a good enough manner and then flown. Flying is the ultimate test and provides the best data, allowing engineers to identify and fix any issues. Some failures must be accepted to achieve success. SpaceX's process may not be as clean as NASA's, but it's much quicker. For instance, NASA spent years and billions of dollars constructing the Space Launch System rocket with a nearly flawless debut flight in late 2022, save for damage to the launch tower. NASA used a linear design approach with extensive and costly analysis, as a failure would have raised serious concerns about the agency's competency. Luckily for SpaceX, they can afford to fail because they've already built three more super heavy rockets that are almost ready to launch. In reality, SpaceX can produce 10 super heavy first stages in the time it takes NASA to construct one SLS rocket. If the first five fail but the next five succeed, which outcome is better? And what about in two or three years when SpaceX is launching and landing a dozen or more super heavy rockets, while NASA's method only allows for a single launch per year? Therefore, SpaceX's rocket may have exploded on Thursday, but they will learn from it and get back in the air, perhaps as early as this fall or winter. Before long, they will be launching frequently. While the recent flight test by SpaceX has demonstrated success in launching the Super Heavy rocket and Starship upper stage, there are still concerns that must be addressed. Specifically, SpaceX needs to continue working on improving the reliability of the Raptor rocket engines, which power both the Super Heavy and Starship. 
The company has already gained significant data on engine performance and can manufacture them rapidly, which should facilitate progress on this front. However, another concern is the ground infrastructure, which experienced issues with the propellant farm and a large crater beneath the orbital launch mount. SpaceX will need to address these concerns by deciding whether to construct a flame trench or upgrade the water deluge system. Solving these problems, particularly with the ground systems, will likely be the most significant hurdle before the next test flight of Starship. On the bright side, there were no injuries during the test, and NASA, one of the company's biggest customers, expressed satisfaction with the test. Musk recently addressed the public for the first time following the test flight. He explained in a tweet that the company had planned to replace the concrete under the orbital launch mount with a water-cooled steel plate, but they couldn't finish the replacement in time for the first launch. Musk admitted that they had misinterpreted some data from the static fire tests, which led them to believe that the concrete could withstand the launch. However, during the flight, it became clear that it couldn't handle the power of the 33 Raptor engines. Musk estimated that it would take a few months to repair the damage and prepare for the second launch attempt. Fortunately, replacing the concrete with steel plates was already part of their plan, so it shouldn't cause as much delay as initially thought. SpaceX's willingness to test the limits and push forward with their ambitious plans has made them the most successful launch company in the world. There is already a line of Starships at the production site ready for launch, and readiness test campaigns for Booster 9 and Starship S26 are almost complete. As soon as the launch pad is ready, both of them will be rolled out with all the data collected from the first launch attempt, making them even more prepared to succeed this time around. SpaceX remains determined to achieve their goals. If they can get this launch pad ready in about four to six months, it will be a testament to their capabilities. Elon Musk has stated on Twitter that, looks like we can be ready to launch again in one to two months. <laughs> Let's see if that happens, as we all know Musk and SpaceX haven't really hit bullseye with all previous time predictions. Once SpaceX resolves their challenges with the Starship rocket, they will have the world's largest and fully reusable rocket. This will undoubtedly have a profound impact on humanity's relationship with space, enabling greater access to it than ever before. However, there is also the potential for increased space debris, which could have negative consequences. Only time will tell what the ultimate impact of this technological achievement will be.